While this is no cooking channel, I must say that I don't like fungi in my home, no matter if it's on my plate or if it's on my wall. The only fungi I can take is penicillin if it is needed. Today we will be looking at how your smart home can inform you if you are in a risk of getting mold on your walls. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Three years ago, or exactly three years plus one month, on the 14th of January 2020, I released video on the mold indicator. That video can still be used, but today we will be looking at how you can install, integrate and use mold indicator in your apartment, your house, cottage or wherever, but also one additional HACS component called mold index. While mold indicator is used to indicate if there is a possibility for mold growth on your walls, basement, etc., in the apartments or spaces that are heated, mold index can give you same information but about the spaces that are not heated, for example, your basement, garage or something else. Both of those sensors can help you prevent development of the mold on your walls and black fungi or mold is really a health hazard. If you do not know about it, check it out. If your home already has black fungi or mold on the walls, you have to remove and unfortunately for this you have to use chemicals. The harder the chemicals are, the worse they are for your health, but the quicker they will kill the mold. But I will not be talking about the products that you can use to remove or tackle the mold on your walls, Today we will be looking at how your smart home can help you prevent development of such mold. As I mentioned, there are two integrations for home assistant that can help you with that. First, we will be looking at the mold indicator. Mold indicator is the internal home assistant component that needs a couple of sensors. You need to have external temperature sensor, internal temperature sensor and also internal humidity meter for each of the rooms or spaces that you want to monitor. Plus, you also need a way to measure the wall temperature. This is a thermometer that I use to measure the temperature of the engines for the helicopters, aircrafts and, of course, RC cars that I used to play with when I had free time. Depending on where you are storing your sensors in the Home Assistant, it can be either in the configuration YAML file or in separate sensors YAML file, you need to create a new sensor. We will be using Platform Mold Indicator. Give it a name. This can be a friendly name so that you know if you have multiple mold indicators in your home, what room this is for. This should be the sensor inside of that room that is measuring the typical room temperature. You also need indoor humidity sensor, which can be the same sensor. In my case, I'm using values from Tado Thermostat smart thermostatic valve plus add-on sensor for the temperature. But it can be some of the other sensors such as Akara sensors or any other Zigbee, Wi-Fi, etc. sensors that you already have in your home. Next thing, you need the outdoor temperature sensor. In this case, I have a balcony temperature sensor which is just underneath this room and I'm using Akara temperature, humidity and pressure sensor in a 3D printed case. The last thing that you need is the calibration factor. Calibration factor has to be calculated. First, you need to subtract outdoor temperature from the indoor temperature values. The next temperature you need is the temperature of the wall. You have to find the coldest spot. For me, this was the corner of the room facing outside. And then you have to subtract the outdoor temperature value from this coldest spot in the room. First value is then divided by the second value and you get the calibration factor. Repeat this for every room. But remember, for each of the rooms you have to have separate room temperature humidity sensor plus you have to find the coldest spot on the wall. Restart your home assistant. And after the home assistant has been restarted, you will see the sensor for each of the mold indicators that you have added to your system. I have two of them. Zeta and Luca room. Currently, the mold indicator for Zeta room is 80. Everything above 70 is a risk of possible mold. 
and what you should do at that point is either wind the room or turn on the dehumidifier to reduce the humidity inside the room. This sensor, as I mentioned, works in rooms that are heated. But the question is how to track these values and possible mold development in rooms that are not heated. This is something that currently Home Assistant doesn't have internal sensor. For that we have to go to HACS. Click on Explore and Download Repositories and type Mold. You will find the repository called Mold Risk Index. Click on it and click on Download Link. Version at the time of the recording of this video is version 1.0.0. Click on Download and this should be it. Don't forget that we need to restart Home Assistant. Click on Navigate. Check Configuration because you should always check the configuration and restart your Home Assistant. After Home Assistant has started up and all the sensors are available, go to Integrations page, click on Add Integration, type in Mold. We have Mold Indicator which we created previously by using the sensors YAML file and now we also have this Mold Risk Index. Let me take the opportunity to thank the author of this component, it's Strix76 on the GitHub repository or Daniel Jonsson. Thank you. Click on Mold Risk Index, type the name, for example basement, select Humidity Sensor, Temperature Sensor. Let's pretend that this is not a balcony but basement, but since I do not have a basement, it will do. And click Submit. Select Area, Basement, Finish. And you have two new entities, one is called the Limit and the other one is Risk Index. Let's quickly go to the GitHub repository. If you want to learn more about this component, how it works, why it was done and why we are not using Mold Indicator, you can read all this here. But let's look at this graph. We can have either too cold or too hot area. And depending on the relative humidity in that space, we have greater or less risk of mold developing. This why this integration gives us two values. One is the limit sensor, which you can set, for example, at 70. And we also have a risk index. Risk index can be used for the tracking of historical data. These levels will tell you how fast the mold can start developing. Based on the sensor data we have, and these integrations, we can now do a couple of automations. Let me create one just as an example for you to know how you can use those in your smart home. Let's create new automation. We can either click here or go to settings, automations, click on create automation, empty automation. For trigger, we will be using numeric state. If you want to do automation on the mold indicator, use the mold indicator sensor. Let's put this sensor here. If the numerical value is above 70, which we said is the number that can be used to track if there is a higher risk of mold starting to develop, and it's in that state for, let's say, 10 minutes, we can create an action. The action for the mold indicator is to either vent the room or start the dehumidifier. The room in question, this Zeta room, doesn't have dehumidifier, also it doesn't have automatic fan. So what I would need to do is open the window. Let's call a service, notification, bearded bot, and we will send a message, Zeta room needs venting. This will send a message to all the recipients of this notification group that the window needs to be open. Let's click save. While we are already here, let's create new automation, empty automation, trigger, also numeric state, and let's use the mold risk index, basement limit, fixed value above, once again 70, and for example, in this case, Let's pretend that this is our dehumidifier or our vent and we want to turn it on. Click on save. And this should be it. Now your home will warn you 
if your heated rooms with the mold indicator or unheated unvented space needs dehumidifier on ventilation. I really do hope that these simple smart home integrations with simple smart home automation can help you prevent mold developing in your apartment. It's much easier to prevent than later on to try and cure your walls. Of course, you may also try and see the reason why the mold indicator is increasing. For example, you have problem with the outer walls, insulation, humidity coming through the walls, etc. But this is a topic of a different channel and a different video and I will not be going into those details. But what I will go into is to say thank you to all those wonderful people that are supporting me on the YouTube channel and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below or going to the merchandise store and buying something there. If you did like this video, don't forget to click the like button down below. And while you are already here, check that you are subscribed. There are a lot of buttons on the YouTube, so try clicking them. And I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.